Hey, hey there everybody, Baylor here in the new cozy setup, and today I want to talk about the relics of Slay the Spire. We be ranking all of the relics, all 100 plus in Spire, on a tier list here, S through F, just to kind of give a, a general idea of their overall usefulness, their overall utility, you know, kind of what I think of them in brief. If you like this video, don't forget to drop a like below, and let me know in the comments what your favorite relic in Slay the Spire is. Because I think everybody's going to have a slightly different opinion, and I want to know what pre people's personal faves are. I'll try to pick out my own fave amongst these as well. Without further ado, let's just start grabbing relics here. Starting with the Anchor. Good old boat thingy. Block on turn one. I think Anchor is a, a very, very good relic, and I'm basically always happy to have it. Providing guaranteed block in, turn, in Act 2 and Act 3 especially. I'm happy with an A tier for that. Aka Beko. Guaranteed damage on your first attack. Also A for Akabeko, A for Anchor. Very tempting. I'm thinking either A or B. Hard to decide personally. Um, I like that Akabeko can can combine with other relics like Bag of Marbles. I'm gonna give that an A as well. I'm just gonna start grabbing these kind of at random here. Mob Bank gives you gold every floor. Mob Bank's not that good. Mob Bank is is very often um, pretty garbage, actually, because you, you usually break it. It's only money until you spend it at a shop, so I can't justify putting it in either of the higher tiers here. They can see your D. Let's, let's put it in D, actually. It's got a cool interaction with the Bloody Idol, though, so that is noteworthy. Speaking of, the Bloody Idol itself, I'm gonna put in B. B for Bloody. Healing every time you get gold is real good. Really, really good. But it's relatively difficult to acquire. Bag of Preparation, that's also an A tier for me, even though it starts with a B. I think extra cards on turn one. In general, noticing a theme here, common relics that affect your turn one. I'm giving a, a high ranking to, and I think we're going to see that pattern continue. Charon's Ashes. Damage every time we exhaust something. Ironclad uh, has no, no shortage of damage. Every time I get this relic, actually, I tend to find that it does uh, a thousand or more damage. It's just an absolutely enormous source of, of AoE that can single-handedly end some fights, especially combined with cards like Fiendfire, Second Wind. I think I'm going to put that in S, uh, especially as a, as a rare relic. It's just really good. Art of War. Energy, the turn after you don't play any attacks. The problem with the Art of War is that it can never do anything on turn one, but in a lot of decks can be a very good energy generator. I think either A or B tier. Uh, depending on your exact setup. Overall, I'm going to give it a B. Easily a thousand damage from from Charon's Ashes. Thanks to relic stats, we've been able to track the, the numerical values of uh, of different relics, and I, I usually see Charon's Ashes do over a thousand damage. The only relic I've seen get a number over 2,000 is Tingsha, which I don't actually know where it is in the, in the list here, so I'm just going to start grabbing more relics. Blood Vial. Very tiny amount of healing. It's consistent, but it's just a little bit too small. I'm going to give it a C tier here over the D, I think, which, which is where I would put just two health per combat because you can get bites for free with the uh, with the blood vial. Bronze scales. Got to be B for bronze. Really, really solid damage, particularly good against the heart. Um, usually at least three per turn. I think we've seen on average it's four and a half per turn. Now that's Mercury Hourglass, but I'd say bronze scales and Mercury Hourglass are, are very, very similar relics in what they do. Do I have the, the hourglass here? And we'll put that in the same tier with it, because they're both they're both contributing very constant amounts of decent damage. The advantage with the hourglass is that it, it happens before the enemies hit you, but they both contribute quite nicely, and they're both good damage relics. Speaking of B, let's talk about bottles. Bottled flame. I can't give it an F tier, because I, I don't think it deserves F tier. But I will give it a D tier, often a relic you find when you'd much rather have found just about anything else. Guaranteeing an attack on turn one is sometimes helpful, and there are a few attacks that go really well with this, like Clothesline, Uppercut, Doom and Gloom, any attacks that draw cards, just to name a few. But a lot of the times I find myself outright skipping this relic, or preferably taking the blue key. Conversely, skills on turn one is pretty dang good, depending on the exact skill that you bottle. An Apotheosis, a Seek, Card Draw, I would put the Bottled Lightning, I think, around B tier. It's it's not necessarily an advantage always. Sometimes you would have just drawn the card on turn one anyway. And I think that's where I'm going to put the Bottled Tornado as well, guaranteeing a particular power on turn one. It's a really good effect, really very nice to, genuine, to guarantee uh, an important power like Demon Form or Echo Form on turn one. But there is that invisible chance that... You would have drawn it on turn one anyway, and of course drawing a card on turn one means not drawing a different card on turn one, which can be detrimental to your turn ones. 
Other things that start with B, Burning Blood, Ironclad's starting relic. I think is very, very good. I'm going to put that in A tier. Just six health per combat, every single combat. It's real good. I, I very, li very rarely like trading the boss relic away on Ironclad for this reason. Abacus gives block when you shuffle the draw pile. As a shop relic, it's not too expensive, and I think it's quite good when it works, but it, it very rarely works. So I don't think I can give it higher than a, a C or so. That said, it does enable some really cool infinite combos, and if you're close to one of those, you should really consider it. Great with the, the reboot cards and the deep breath cards, too. Let's see, do I have the other starter relics here? We've got the, the Miracle from Watcher, which I think is pretty good. It's not, it's not as high tier as the, the Ironclads starting relic, but I think it's, it's pretty good. One energy on a turn that you want is quite useful in and of itself, but where I really like the Miracle is that it combos with any kind of skill playing. It, it can activate conditional cards like Sanctity and Crush Joints. It can activate Letter Opener and it can be upgraded by various effects. And for that reason, it's a B. Whereas just one energy on one turn, I think, would be a C. Speaking of C, Calendar starts with a C. The Stone Calendar does really good damage on turn seven, but most fights don't go to turn seven. Um, some boss fights do, some elite fights do, but most of the time, Calendar is sitting there unused. Another thing that starts with C is Calipers, which I'm not going to put in C tier. Calipers can be very much run-defining, letting you carry your block over from turn to turn. And in many runs, I think this relic is a, an S tier, but a lot of the time that you find the Calipers, they don't do anything, and it, it can be quite difficult to, to generate enough excess block. You have to have 15 additional block uh, to get any use out of Calipers, and I don't think that justifies S tier as a result. I think it's just a little bit lower. Calipers would often be good here, but it also would often not be. Blue Candle. Unfortunately, not a very good relic. Let's you play curses for one health. It's got a couple of niche and interesting interactions. It can let you get rid of curses if you happen to be carrying them around, but oftentimes you'll want to, those will be the first cards you remove anyway. Uh, but sometimes that playing a card for one damage can be useful, such as activating something like the Centennial Puzzle here, which I'm going to put at B tier. Really good card draw, but you have to take damage to activate it, and that can be a little bit of a problem. You'd much rather have Unconditional Draw, which is what the Bag of Prep is, but the fact that it's one more card is pretty dang good. A Strange Spoon. Strange Spoon's another very strange one. This is a, a great example of a relic that can be actively detrimental, with Shivs, for example, putting those into your... into your discard pile instead of your you know, instead of the exhaust pile, can be very detrimental. But if your deck exclusively has exhaust cards that you want to have come back, so stuff like Adrenalines, Catalysts, Offerings, then the Strange Spoon giving it back can be really, really cool. And for, for some very special builds, Spoon is a really cool relic. On average, though, it's a, a wash, with some decks being actively harmed and some decks benefiting only marginally. More boat thingies. The captain's boat thingy gives us block on turn three. I think all three boat thingies are very good, um, but I do think the captain's wheel is probably the least effective of the three. Just although it's the highest numerical block value, the timing of the block is the least convenient, con uh, being a really effective only in a small handful of fights. The slime boss, Kremlin knob, Lagavulin, quite good against heart, pretty good against spear and shield, but there's many, many, many more fights where you'd rather have the block on turn one or turn two. And that's why I think the hoot, the horn cleat is the best of the boat thingies. Is it good enough to be S tier? I think so. I actually do. For, uh, for an uncommon relic, horn cleat is absurd. Giving you 14 block on turn two, relevant in basically every single fight in the game, with very few exceptions. It's so good. Let's put some other stuff in S tier, since I see a few other S tier relics here. Dead Branch, generating a random card anytime you exhaust a card. There are so many things that combo with Dead Branch, it would take an hour to list them all. The more you have, the better the relic gets, but even with only a handful of exhaust, this relic is stellar. Not S tier though, unfortunately, the boot. Boot gives extra damage if you're doing less than five, but shame on you, you should have done more than five damage. Poor Boot. Much beloved, but I'm booting it down to D tier here. Not worthy of F though. Cauldron, I think, is in a, a similar spot. Pay 150 gold for five random potions is usually too many potions. I mean, generally speaking, I'd much rather be able to pay, you know, 50 gold for three random potions. You almost never have spots for all of the potions, and rarely, rarely is it better than just, like, 
buying the other potions in the store. And I think that's actually what makes Cauldron weak, is that it's always offered alongside three other guaranteed potions for sale for Cauldron. All right, self-forming clay gives you block whenever you take damage. This is, I think, also an S-tier relic. Um, the amount of block that this can generate in a self-damage build is exceptional, and it also just helps you massively if you're in a fight where you start taking damage. The more times you take damage, the better it gets, and that can be really, really spectacular against Heart. I've seen this, I've seen this relic generate genuinely 60 block on one turn against Heart. Ceramic Fish. Nine gold whenever you pick up a card. I think it's better than Mob Bank a lot of the time. That's not quite true. It's it's okay. It's it's really not that bad. I find it consistently gives you, you know, 100 to 120 gold. If you find it early, it's a good process. I would I would not personally put this in F. I think it's it's a passably fine relic. It's a slow trickle of money. If you remember it, it can be quite helpful in a store. And if you have the bloody idol. It'll heal you whenever you add a card to the deck, and that's kind of cool. I think I'm going to put it in D. I think it's, it's got to be comparable to Mall Bank. Mall Bank pays off faster, but the Ceramic Fish does usually give more total. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve the F tier for a particular type of Relic. How about Champ Belt? Adds weak when you do Voln. I think that's B. B for Belt. It's a pretty good Relic, but it needs uh, it needs some work to actually, to actually do a lot for you. The face is Face of Cleric. Giving hit points. Every time you finish a battle, this is one of the good face outcomes, and I think the good faces are spectacular. Uh, I'm going to put this even in S, actually. If you get this in the early game, this is easily 25 to 35 max health. Two mangoes, which is insane. Speaking of, the actual mango, I'm going to put A tier. Just very good, very good max HP. Um, and I think we can easily make conclusions about the other fruit from there. Pear would be B tier. Strawberry is somewhere down there. Come to me, Strawberry. There you are. Rank those fruits. All right, Cloak Class. Back when this was originally added to the game at two block per card, I would have easily put this in S tier. I think it's only A tier now at one block per card in hand at the end of turn, which is often more block than you'll get from the uh, Thread Needle. Mango cut in the line? Yeah, that's true, it did. Let's, let's officially get it back to the end there. You're right, we can't have that. We can't have that. All right, we want it. We want an entry for the F tier. Here's one. Hand Drill. Hand Drill is paying 150 gold for an effect that will almost never matter. That's generally speaking how I feel about it. I've, I've tried taking it a couple of times and not once have I been impressed or felt like its contribution was particularly valuable. And given how conditional it is, it requires that the enemy have block. It requires that you need to be able to use the vulnerable. I don't know. I don't think so. Darkstone Periapt. I'm going to put that in D tier. D for Darkstone. It's max HP when you gain a curse, and that can sometimes be as much as like 30 health over the course of a run. Sometimes Darkstone Periapt ends up being just as good as Face of Cleric, but most of the time Darkstone does nothing at all, and that's why it's in D tier. Clockwork Souvenir. That I'm going to put A. Guaranteed blocking Vuln on Heart. Combos with so many cards from so many classes. Just artifacts guaranteed turn one in general is very good against so many different opponents. And the relatively low price of acquisition, I think, makes it a particularly good. Here's an interesting one. Duvu Doll gives you bonus strength per curse you have. The higher ascension you're playing on, the better this is. Uh, if you're above ascension 10, you guaranteed get one point of strength, which I think makes it pretty good. Better than better than Vajra. I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a B tier. But if you're on lower ascension, this relic may not do anything at all. Now, that said, in the rare event where you do get multiple curses in the deck, Doodal can absolutely break a run with five or more points of innate strength being provided from curses. It can do some really cool things, but we're talking one in a hundred runs or something. I'm pretty happy with a B evaluation, which is probably where I'll put Vajra. Let's see what we got here. Defect starting orb, cracked core. I think cracked core is a C tier. It's a nice little bit of starting damage. It gets you started on orbs, but... It's really just not that good. But these are going to get pretty full. Data Disc. One guaranteed focus. That is amazing on the defect. Data Disc loves, loves defect. And another guarantee, or another defect particular relic, the Gold Plated Cables activates your front orb one more time at the end of each turn. I think Gold Plated Cables are also excellent. Just anything that, that makes your orb build a little bit more potent without requiring any setup, that these relics work immediately on turn one is what makes them so good. 
Meanwhile, the emotion ship has a stronger effect activating all of your orbs, but requires that you take damage on a prior turn. The chip can be very good, but is quite difficult to utilize effectively. I think I'll rank it a tier lower, but emotion ship is really good as a general rule. I kind of feel bad putting it... No, I'm going to put it in A tier. I feel bad putting it in B tier, because it's really, really powerful. It's just a conditionally powerful relic, rather than a guaranteed powerful relic. Something that's also conditionally powerful, Chemex from the store, making X cost cards more effective. I really like what this relic does. I think it's super cool. Uh, there's just not enough X cost cards to make it consistently awesome. But if you've got a couple, oh boy, is it good. I'll rank that a B. How about B for books, Nilri's Codex. I think this is one of the strongest. Would I put this in S tier? I almost don't want to put it in S because it's so onerous to use sometimes, but uh, Nilri's Codex, let's do it. Let's put that in the A tier. It is an onerous, onerous relic to make use of. Damaru on Watcher, one mantra per turn. I think Damaru supports Divinity builds really, really well, but you're not always specking into Divinity. Once you have Damaru, you should definitely pick up the first mantra card you see. Also with a B, Bird Faced Urn. I think is a, a very excellent source of healing. I'm going to put it up in A with the uh, the Burning Blood. Bird Faced Urn can be an absolutely massive amount of sustain in any deck with a decent power count, particularly on Defect combo with something like uh, Creative AI. All right, we've got to pick up the pace here. Frozen Egg, guaranteed upgraded powers. I think that a B. I think, I think about a B. Feels right. Not always guaranteed to get use out of it. Sometimes those powers will be upgraded anyway, but upgraded powers in general are extremely good. How about Gambling Ship? That's an S for me. So much, you know, if, if Bag of Prep is two cards on turn one, Gambling Ship is at least potentially five. If you discard five cards, you get five cards drawn. And comboed with any source of turn one draw, it can be even better. Courier, bonus money from shops. I think that's great. It's a, it's a B tier. The fact that it restocks the store is particularly cool. Golden Eye, bonus scry on Watcher. This is, this is almost S tier. I'll put it in A tier. But uh, increasing the amount of scry you get is crazy, crazy good. Yeah, particularly on silent, gambling ship is incredibly good. Back when um, there used to be a, a site for tracking spire win rates and such, and it determined that gambling chip was most associated with winning on silent, which made sense to me. Burner, now that's going to be an S tier for me. You can guaranteed block the 10 by 4 from Spire Spear with a little bit of setup. You can manipulate this relic with a little bit of patience to give you intangible on and key turns in so many different fights. Such a breakable, breakable, breakable rare relic. And I think that's just as good with Helix too. Helix is right up there as one of the best defensive relics in the game, being able to block an entire turn of an enemy assault, be it the big 67 from Heart, a big hit from Transient, or many, many other things. Strike Dummy! S for Strike. No, I can't rate Strike Dummy an S. I think it's a I think it's a a classic C tier kind of relic. Very, very good in the early game, uh, particularly on Ironclad. Watcher also really likes it for making her strikes do much, much more damage. Um, but oftentimes this relic does absolutely nothing if you've removed all your strikes. So it can feel pretty bad then. Also pretty low tier. I'm gonna rate Dreamcatcher quite low. Extra card rewards are good, but Dreamcatcher really doesn't give you very many extra card rewards. So I don't think I like it there. How about fan favorite ice cream? Retain your energy from turn to turn. I really like the effect, but it only does stuff if you're generating extra energy, which can be a bit of a problem. I, for that reason, I can't put it in the S tier. It's I think either an, an A or a B, probably a B. I think ice cream can often be a trap, making you take cards that you really ought not to. A double energy that you don't actually have the energy to spend, uh, don't have any way to spend the energy that you've generated, and then you die with 20 energy and wonder, how could it all go wrong? That's a trap. End Caridian, free powers on turn one, it's good. It's really good. I don't think it's quite as good as, as Nilri's, but a very, very powerful effect overall. Let's put that in B. Juzu Bracelet, this one's interesting. If you're speed running. This is an S. This could also be an S tier uh, relic in certain types of challenge. Overall, though, turning combats, uh, turning of yeah, turning combats into events is not necessarily a good thing. Um, and I think I would put Juzu. Let's put it in in C tier to acknowledge that it's got some genuine real use to it under certain circumstances. But for the most part, it's it's very skippable. Definitely advise taking blue key over Juzu. Sometimes, 
It might be better to just leave it on the ground rather than picking it up, but that's where I'm going to put the Juzu. It's got uses, just not in the traditional sense, right? Now, Gremlin Horn, that's, that's going to be A tier for me. Very easy solve for the Reptomancer fight. Just very helpful energy generation in a lot of different combats. Magic Flower makes Ironclad heal more. I think that's also exceptional. We're going to see a lot of high rankings for most of the... Uh, most of the rares. Bonus healing is so huge, particularly comboed with Ironclad's Burning Blood. Duality. This could this could potentially be an S, but I'll put it in uh, I'll put it in A as well, giving additional dex temporary dexterity whenever you play an attack. Can be a, a very much build defining relic for Watcher, especially combined with good old orange pellets from the shop. Gurya gains strength at rest sides up to three times. It's good, but it's expensive. This is either B or A. Depends on the character, really. I'm going to put it in B, truthfully. Noting that Gurya at a shop is usually a trap. You're spending 300 gold for the ability to do something other than upgrading. Strength is great, but don't forget you're down the upgrades for having invested in your Gurya. That said, with the right build, if you've got Ironclad Limit Break, it's incredible. It's incredible on Watcher. It's just good. Lizard Tail, you are super, super high tier. Lizard Tail gives you a second chance at life. Sometimes you don't need it. I think a lot of the times I end up not using the Lizard Tail, and I think for that reason, I, I'm not gonna put it in S tier, but it's definitely something you wanna have and not need versus need and not have, you know? And I think that's where I'm gonna put Meat on the Bone too, healing you 12 after each combat. A really, really good source of sustain. Preserved Insect. I think that's another very, very high tier one. Preserved Insect makes all elites a lot easier to kill, especially the ones before the heart. And that is a, a huge, huge boon, especially as a common relic. Preserved Insect is cheap to buy and easy to get your hands on, but I don't think quite meets the criteria for S for me. How about the Lantern? Lantern's guaranteed energy on turn one. I often find that Lantern isn't always getting a full use. I'm going to put it in the B tier here. It's not quite up there with the bonus draw or block on turn one, but often very good. Matryoshka gives you bonus relics out of the next couple of chests. I honestly don't think this is very good. In an ideal situation, you're getting two relics for the price of one, but they're actually stinky relics, as the bonus relic you get is guaranteed either common or uncommon, no chance of a rare, um, with a 75% chance of giving you a common. So you're trading one uncommon relic for probably two commons, and you may not even get two chests, which is the real problem, especially if you've got a curse key. You may not want to open your chests either. It's not quite down in D tier, but it's it's really close. Smiling Mask, cheaper removals, I think is, is quite good. Doesn't always save you a lot of cash, uh, although I do like removals in general. I'm gonna put this in B. I often change my pathing to accommodate the Smiling Mask, and I'm quite happy for the extra cash that it provides. A lot more reliable, I think, than either the Maw Bank or the Ceramic Fish as a gold relic. Maybe I'd put it one tier above those in C tier here, noting that it's it's better than these two as a gold relic goes. Let's see, Ginger makes you immune to weaken. As a rare relic, I don't think Ginger's all that cool. Ginger can do some neat things with artifacts, allowing you to use your artifact for different purposes. For example, um, one charge of artifact and Ginger will block vulnerable from collector whereas you would need two charges of artifact otherwise. But in practice, like, I think that's happened one time in thousands of hours of Spire experience for me, so I don't think the ginger is particularly good. In general, though, being immune to weak is great. There's lots of enemies that weaken you, and not being weakened can definitely be the difference between killing and not killing. But it doesn't feel as impactful as some of the other really valuable rare relics do. Odd Mushroom. Reduces the amount of damage you take from vulnerable. I think it's a useful effect, but it's easy to forget, and it's just not that much numerically. Cultist faced caca! Caca. You know where it's gotta go. Ink Bottle. Ink Bottle is good card draw. The more cards you play, the more cards Ink Bottle will draw, and therefore the better the Ink Bottle gets. I really, really like Ink Bottle in general. You can manipulate it to be guaranteed turn one draw, and it can be so much more than that. So I, I think it's very much in the same tier as the Bag of Preparation. It's oftentimes one, but sometimes more than one draw per combat. Uh, and you have so, uh, quite a bit of control over when that is. Banner notes the ginger can block the weak from the curse card. That's true. Can also block the weak from the gremlin face. We'll put that one in F tier. The stinky face of the face trader event, making you weak on turn one, unless you have ginger. Kunai. Oh man, kunai is good stuff. Kunai can be quite difficult to use. 
but gaining dex every time you play three attacks is a hella useful effect. Particularly on silent with blade dances, it can be a, a build, basically. Uh, but notably, Watcher and Defect can also make huge use of it too. Consider Defect with Hologram all for one or Watcher with uh, flurries and weaves. Hey, hey everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. Letter opener does good AOE damage, but three skills is a little difficult to meet the requirement of. So I'm gonna put that one in B tier. Doesn't do that much damage. I think, I tend to find that the letter opener does comparable damage to the bronze scales and to the mercury hourglass, but requires me to change my play in order to do so. Golden Idol gives you additional money. You pick it up in an event in act one, it's really not that much money, but I think it's generally worth picking up in exchange for the max HP or whatever else that you must give up in order to accommodate it. Let's see, membership card. This is an easy S tier. Membership card is often just instantly worth buying, like instantly gives you money in the shop that you find it if it's ha less than half your gold to buy it and makes everything cheaper. It's just so good. Just, just so good. Read some other shop relics. Melange. I'm going to have to put Melange. Having seen how it works with Deep Breath, I, I really feel compelled to put Melange in D tier. It gives you scry whenever you shuffle the draw pile, which is theoretically useful, but in practice just works awkwardly. It's got some weird interactions and it just doesn't do what you want it to do. Dolly's Mirror lets you duplicate a card in your deck. Dolly's Mirror, I mean, depending on what you've got to duplicate, can be S tier. Very notably, if you're duplicating an upgraded card, you get an upgraded card. Um, and you can also upgrade a card by copying a card that you have the corresponding egg for. I don't think it's quite S tier because it does require you that you have something good to duplicate, but it can be exceedingly powerful. Nyao's Lament, letting you kind of as a starting bonus, you have to compare this against the other options. I think it's honestly not bad. If you're able to get a free, let's put it in C. If you're able to get a free elite out of your Nyao's Lament, those first three combats have one health, then it can be quite good. But if you are only getting three free combats, you might be better off with the seven max HP. So that's that's usually how I feel about it. If you can get a free elite, go for it. It's quite good. But if you can't, then take something else. Meal ticket heals you at stores. I like this a lot less than meat on the bone, but in general, I think sustain relics are quite good. And I think that uh, meal ticket fits nicely into the into the B tier. How about the mutagenic strength? Strength on turn one, you get this from the Jack Stealer. I think I'm going to put this in C tier as well, noting that there are often better options at the Jack Stealer event. Some, the Transform 2 in particular is uh, usually very good, but 3 Strength on turn 1 can combo with Orange Pellets or it can combo with Artifact quite nicely. That's, I think, where I'm going to put the Medical Kit too. Medical Kit lets you play status cards to exhaust them. This can be very, very valuable, especially if you've got a particularly small deck. Also in Z tier, I'm going to put the Ninja Scroll. Three guaranteed shivs on turn one is quite nice, but can really clog your turn one draw. And there are many circumstances, especially on Silent, who has those two additional cards on turn one from her starting relic, where the Ninja Scroll is costing you draws on turn one. So I think I'll put it in C tier. For that reason. Let's see, Nunchaku, babysit it for energy. Every 10 attacks is, it's just not that often. I think Nunchaku ends up being uh, energy a lot less frequently than Happy Flower. I'll put that in C as well. Bag of Marbles, turn one vulnerable. It's great. Turn one vulnerable is great. Removes artifact from enemies. Quite very, quite solid, quite good, but I don't think I would put it in, in A tier with uh, some of the other like truly stellar commons. And I think that's where I'm going to put the Twisted Funnel as well. Twisted Funnel is four poison on turn one, that shop relic for the silent. Can remove artifact from enemies, it can also just be a little bit of free damage, or it can get poison started for Catalyst, which is quite nice. Gold coin, instant 300 gold, that's got to be an A tier. It's not quite as good as some of the others up in S tier, but easy peasy A for me. Oma Mori, unfortunately, I like what you do, but oftentimes you don't do what you do. Supposed to block two curses, but curses inspired just aren't offered often enough to make it ever a guarantee. Sometimes you pick up Omomori first relic and you still have two charges at the end of the heart. I'm sorry, Omomori. That said, Omomori notably for being the only way you can avoid the curse from the Necronomicon, which is definitely up in uh, up in A tier here, I think. Duplicating your first two cost attack each turn 
it's great. Only reason this doesn't go into S is that oftentimes you don't have a two cost attack as you're picking it up. You don't get to know if you're getting this thing ahead of time. It costs you 21 health to pick up and you must take a curse unless you have Omomore. So I'll leave it in A here. But the effect alone is in S tier. Also pretty cool that the curse this generates can do some unique things in and of itself. Paper Crane, that's an S tier for me. Paper Crane makes your weaken essentially almost twice as strong, reducing enemy damage by 40%, taking so many big threatening attacks and bringing them down to nothing. I think it's one of, if not the best defensive relic in the game, and I would absolutely put it on the same tier as Incense Burner and Helix in that regard. Insanely good, insanely good. Potion Belt, more potion slots. I think potion slots are really good. You don't always have the potions to put in the potion belt, which is why I'm gonna put it in B tier, belt tier, but it's great. Or a Calcum, guaranteed block, six block if you have none. I think that's a, a C tier effect. It's very, very good in the early game, tends to fall off in the later game, but does still have some utility. And I can say that I've had runs where Aura Calcum has been life-saving against the heart, which is kind of cool. Paper Frog makes your vulnerable do more damage. It's not quite as good as the, the Paper Crane is. I think this is A or B, probably B, given how difficult it is to get your hands on as an ironclad only uncommon. Vulnerable can be a little difficult to keep up at times, but it's quite potent. Bludgeon with a Paper Frog does 73 damage. Slapper. Toynathopter, healing whenever you use a potion, pretty good. This is definitely less total healing than the Burning Blood. I think I'll put it in, in B tier. In practice tends to be five hit points every other combat if you're using your potions with maximum effectiveness. Does allow you to buy more health at stores, which is quite nice. Pantograph, however, I think I'll put that in A tier. Massive amount of healing right when you need it at the boss fight and triggers multiple times on Ascension 20. Good stuff. I put, yeah, Birdface turn in A over Toynorthopter in B. I would say Birdface turn is often, or at least can be a lot more healing than the Ornithopter is. Uh, let's see. Prayer Wheel gives you an additional card reward after every combat. I think that's an incredibly good effect. Prayer Wheel is one of the, I think, it, well, is the best card generating relic. That is to say, Prayer Wheel gives you more additional cards than any other relic, including Question Card. I'm looking at you, although Question Card does combo very nicely with this. Question Card giving you only one more option at each card reward, I think is going to be probably B. A little bit less good than the the prayer wheel is, but they're both very good relics overall. Ori, meanwhile, you can buy it in a store. It's five card rewards all at once. I think that's I think that's probably B as well. Getting to see a lot of things. If you have question card or eggs, the Ori gets quite a bit better. Speaking of pellets, orange pellets allow you to remove all debuffs from yourself, which is so very good. Combos with many, many powers across many, many characters. Fasting on Watcher, Bias Cognition on Defect, Wraith Form on Silent, Mummy Hand. Depending on the run, this may be S tier. I think, generally speaking, A tier. We can give you a free card every time you play a power. Oftentimes, Mummy Hand is as good as an energy relic. It's great. Ornamental Fan. Block every time you play three attacks. I don't think that's as good as the Kunai. Probably B or even C tier. Depending on the build, I'm probably going to put it in C. It's, it's some block sometimes, but it's not that much, usually. Brimstone, the ironclad exclusive shop relic, gives you two strength every turn. Brimstone has a massively powerful upside, but it comes with a serious downside, making all enemies gain one strength per turn. Very, very scary against certain opponents. To make Brimstone work well, you have to lean into its offensive potential and kill things fast, while um, still having a couple safeguards here and there against enemy attacks. For the two strength alone, it would be in S tier, but because it comes with this big ass downside, I'm going to put it in A here. Let's see. in laws gift. Higher chance of rare cards. You have to give up another relic to get the gift, but the fact that it's oftentimes worth doing, I, I think means... I th I'm going to put this in B tier. Triples your chance of finding rares. Usually you see two to three additional rares with the gift. If you can get the gift for free, it's great. You know, giving up a relic that doesn't do anything. But um, giving up something often means it can be a bit of a challenge to be worth taking. Peace Pipe lets you remove cards at every rest site. I really want this to be A tier. I think extra removals are very good. Um, but just like the Guria, the fact that it's a rare relic that doesn't provide an immediate effect, the fact that it's very expensive to buy, and the fact that your access to rest sites might be limited puts it in B for me. Pen Nib doubles every 10th attack. Pen Nibs 
Pen Nib's a very, very good common relic. I don't think it's the best. It does require a little bit of um, of caretaking. And you're not always sure exactly what the right number is, I think. Because you don't know what cards you're going to draw in what order. But if you can line it up on your best attacks, it's super potent. Great with Reaper, great with Bludgeon, great with Wallop. Pocket Watch, that I'm going to put in S tier. Extra card draw, potentially every turn, plus three cards drawn. Uh, if you played three or fewer cards on your last turn. At the start of the game, this is just instant free card draw for almost every character. As you get into the late game, it's a little harder to play around, but still an immensely powerful draw source. It's just so good. One of my one of the relics that I most associate with having a winning run for my for me personally. Easy S tier for me. How about the shard? Prismatic Shard lets you see relics from every character. I think it's a super cool, super fun effect, but it's just not very good. Um it's very challenging to, to put a run together, and you're very much at the whims of the RNG. Paying 150 gold for it, that really stings, but I really like Shard for, for what it does. I think it's a very cool relic. I just can't in good conscience rate it very highly. Here's a low-tier relic for you. The, the Lost Hungry Face means you miss out on a relic. This relic is the opposite of a relic. That's bad. That's bad. How about the Red Mask? Red Mask you get from the Red Mask Gang, giving you weak on turn one. I think that's really good as an effect. Red Mask you're usually getting by either fighting the Red Mask Gang, which you should absolutely do, or paying all of your money in Act 3, which you should probably not do. Uh, and if you get it in Act 2, then it's really stellar, because it might even get you bonus money if you encounter the Tomb of Lord Red Mask later on. Red Skull. What about Red Skull in B? Red Skull gives you strength below half HP on Ironclad. It's Pretty dang good overall. Regal Pillow, I like the bonus healing, but I think you don't often want to rest, and a lot of times that I pick up Regal Pillow, it doesn't do much of anything. Rinnick Capacitor here gives you bonus orb slots on Defect. I think that's an excellent effect. Defect loves more orb slots, and it's one of those really, really good shop relics for the Defect, so we're gonna put that in A. Frozen Eye, letting you see the draw pile in order. The more draw you have, the better this gets. I think it takes a little bit of patience and a bit of willingness to think your your turns through, but what the Frozen Eye does is quite powerful. Not not universally useful and doesn't doesn't add any numerical value that you can directly observe, which I think makes it really difficult to to want to have. But the effect is really useful if you're willing to use it. it doesn't take as much time as you might think either. Just like simply quickly knowing like, am I going to draw card A next turn or the turn after next turn? can be extremely valuable to you. So you don't have to you don't have to plan out every detail of every moment to get good use out of it. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. Spirit poop. It's stinky. You get this for giving a curse to the to the bonfire spirits. We're going to put that in in D, I think. Molten egg guaranteed upgraded attacks. Very good stuff. I'll put that up there with the frozen egg in B. Where's the uh, toxic egg? There it is at the bottom. Toxic egg guaranteed upgraded skills. That's much better. And depending on the character, I think Toxic Egg is an S tier for, for Silent in particular, but just about everybody can make really good use out of it. Ironclad loves it with Corruption. Um, there's plenty of Watcher skills that she loves to have upgraded. So I'm going to put the Toxic Egg above two tiers even above the others. Singing Bowl lets you skip cards to gain max HP. It's good, but it takes a while to be good. And if you get it late, it's not that great. So I'm going to put that in B. Oddly Smooth Stone, guaranteed one dex. Pretty good. I think I'll put that in the same tier as Vajra, which is probably going to be B tier. Speaking of, where is Vajra? Let's get you in there as well. Plus one strength, plus one dex. I rate those as, as both a B, generally speaking, across the four characters. Happy Flower, guaranteed energy every third turn. Do I rate that in the same tier as Lantern? I think it's one tier above. It's, it's, if you work around it, Happy Flower can be constant energy multiple times per fight, and if you can retain your cards or otherwise set up your draws, it's just going to be the gift that keeps on giving. And as a common, it's pretty easy to get your hands on nice and cheap. Definitely up there with Bag of Prep and Anchor uh, in the common relics. Shuriken, I'm going to put Shuriken here with the Kunai, giving you strength scaling instead of defense scaling for your attack spam. Just like the kunai, it does require a little bit of setup to get going, but once it gets going, it's real good. Let's see here. Silent Starting Relic, that's definitely up in A. Guaranteed turn one draw. Shovel. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't think Shovel is too good. As much as we like our, as much as we like our dig memes, 
I'm gonna put it down in D for dig. Nobody can argue with that. D is for digging. It's good enough for me. Problem with the shovel is that you have to, you're trading away a guaranteed improvement via an upgrade or rest to get a random improvement in the form of a relic. A random relic is unreliable, although it can be good, and gambling with a relic can be a way to bail out a run. It's just not reliable and certainly not worth paying 300 gold for in a shop. Sneko Skull, bonus poison for the silent. I think that's up in A. If you've got a poison build going, Sneko Skull will take your poison build and send it to the next level, particularly boosting stuff like Bouncing Flask, Envenom, or Noxious Fumes. Tiny Chest. Sorry, you're in D tier. That's just the way it is. Tiny Chest makes it so that you see additional additional chests from question mark rooms, every fourth question mark room. But oftentimes you only get the one relic back that you would have found in the first place. And it may come at the expense of getting an event or a combat that you actually wanted more. Although usually you want a relic more than a combat. All right, thread needle. that's definitely... At five, I think this would have been S tier. As it stands now, it's an A tier, giving a solid four block per turn. Really good. Really, really good. Let's see, Warp's Tongs. I think Warp's Tongs are also an A, giving you a guaranteed upgrade per turn. That's good stuff. Sling of Courage. Bonus Strength against Elites. I put this... I put this in B. It's twice as strong as the Vajra is, but only for one particular type of combat. Depending on which character you are, you may or may not have a, a huge use for the Sling, but I particularly like it on Silent and Watcher for the, the bonus oomph there. For a relatively low price of acquisition, I think it's uh, totally worth picking up. War Paint, two random skill upgrades. I think War Paint and Whetstone are both run-of-the-mill, kind of average relics. We'll put them in the uh, in the C tier. Eternal Feather, that's gonna be A. Massive, massive, massive guaranteed healing whenever you enter a rest site. Let's keep grabbing. All right, White Beast Statue, giving a guaranteed potion every combat. I think that's very stellar. Put that up in A tier. On average, I think you get about, about twice as many potions with a White Bee statue. Really, really good stuff, especially if you can combine it with a Toy Ornithopter or something. Tough bandages. These I'm going to put in S tier. These are very much, very much build defining um, and can be absolutely, absolutely incredible. Generating just massive amounts of block with stuff like Calculated Gamble, Prepareds, Unloads, anything that lets you discard a lot of cards which usually pairs with drawing a lot of cards, um, can generate just enormous, enormous block. And its counterpart, Tingsha, I think is almost as good. Tingsha's got the exact same condition, but it does damage randomly instead of blocking. And I think block is on a, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis, block is better than randomly targeted damage. So I'm gonna put the bandages in B, or sorry, the bandages in S, and the Tingsha in A tier. Just a couple more to go now. Waffle for the full heal, a classic of the channel. I think I'll put it in A. It's like a it's like a strawberry, but the full heal that it gives can be absolutely miraculous. Plus, it's delicious. Sundial. Sundial's a cool infinite enabler. It's only good sometimes, though. When it works, it does really cool stuff. A lot of the times, though, and I suspect for many of you out there, Sundial is randomly, without warning, gain two energy and forget about it. All right, the specimen. Specimen causes poison to transfer to different enemies. I find that oftentimes when I find the specimen, I don't even have poison. And uh, when I do, usually the transferring doesn't matter. That said, sometimes specimen can do some really, really powerful things, uh, like against Reptomancer, letting you poison the daggers and having the poison transfer to Repto. Um, and it can also let you kind of carry poison over from phase one to phase two of Awakened One, which is pretty cool. All right, free Dark Orb on turn one. I think that's A tier for uh, for the, the symbiotic virus. One of the best relics that Defect has, and uh, just a really good... It's its front-loaded scaling, almost. That's how I like to think of it. It's just great. Makes Compiled Rivers better. Does lots of damage for free. Tungsten Rod saves you one health whenever you take damage. Not quite an S-tier relic, but definitely in A-tier. Having lots of cool little interactions, working even in events, preventing self-damage, you name it. You name it. All right, Turnip prevents Frail. I think Turnip is one tier higher than Ginger. Just like Ginger, Turnip lets you avoid wasting your artifact on the Frail debuff. And I think I rate this overall because I, I think that Frail is a worse debuff for the player than uh, Weak is. This is partially because block cards tend to be valued in such a way that Frail 
um, gets you with rounding. For example, defense block for five, but with frail only block for three. That's a 40% reduction, even though, only, even though frail is supposed to be only a 25% reduction. And various other cards suffer similarly. There's a lot of frail in Act 2, and a turnip really helps there. And it's invaluable against heart, too. So I like the turnip. All right, Serpent Head. I think Serpent Head is the best outcome from the Face Trader event, and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put both of the good faces in S tier because I think they are just incredible, incredible relics. Serpent Head is often more money than old coin. I've seen it be 500 gold from from one relic. It's really good. Tori reduces unblocked attack damage. That's definitely up in A tier. Not quite as good a block generator as the Incense Burner, the Fossilized Helix, or the Paper Crane. Although notably, Tori and Tungsten Rod together are S tier. Very, very powerful combination as they'll make you completely immune to anything five or less damage. Toolbox, it's a guaranteed, it's a card on turn one and you get to choose one of three. I think it's really cool. The variability of the colorless card pool, I think puts it in B tier, but as a general rule, being able to choose one of three cards on turn one is good stuff. And I really like Toolbox just for providing that. Lots of colorless cards are zero cost as well, which helps. Unceasing Top. Love it or hate it, this thing either does incredible things or it does absolutely nothing. For most of you, I'm sure this does nothing until you for until you remember that you have it, which is rarely. It took me a long time to start remembering Unceasing Top. I'm gonna put it in C tier. I wish it was I wish it was better. Sometimes it does really cool things, so I can't put it in D or F tier. But most of the time it does nothing. Some of the time it does many things. Particularly if you're on low ascension, if you're below ascension 10, building around the unceasing top can be a really fun way to achieve your first infinite build. All right, Ancient D-Set. This is probably my least favorite of the energy generators. The fact that it's two energy is nice. Reliably on turn one is nice. But only after visiting a rest site is a little, little awkward. I do like it for energy turn one against Spire Spear and Spire Shield, as well as, of course, energy turn one against any boss. Wing Boots, they let you teleport around. Changing your pathing. I actually don't think they're as good as we often hype them. I'm going to put them in B tier. The wing boots are come in place of a, a, you know, a different relic. And depending on your map generation, you may not actually be able to get additional useful pathing out of the, the boots. So I'm going to put them in B. Oh, boots. I will give them the boot. Let's see, just a few left to... Uh, to right here. Teardrop Locket starting you out in Calm for Watcher. I think that's an exceptionally good effect. I'm going to put that up in A tier. It's basically two energy every single combat, but you get to choose when the energy arrives, and that is very, very strong. Mark of the Bloom. So this is a relic you get from the Mind Bloom event when you take upgrade all. This relic simply prevents you from healing, which on its own is an F tier effect. Uh, I'm going to evaluate this as the if, the choice to upgrade all cards and not be able to heal, which is a powerful, powerful option that you should take sometimes. You should consider this option uh, in Mind Bloom because upgrading every card in your deck, especially if you have 10 or more upgraded cards, can be really, really powerful and really, really valuable. The downside of being unable to heal really, really sucks. And so I think maybe only about 30% of the time you want to upgrade everything, even when going for heart, you should, uh, you should consider upgrading all because a properly fully upgraded deck can just dumpster the late game. But that downside is huge and you have to be very, very, very careful about how you play from there. I find it most, most likely to take this event on silent. But yeah, on its own, the relic is definitely done in F, just to be completely clear. Circlet. If you, if you have a circlet, that means you have every relic. That means you're doing a really good job. So I'm going to put circlet in S tier because if you see it, you're winning for sure. Let's see, is that just the boss relics left then? Yes, that's every relic inspire rated except for the boss relics. Let's see, put the boss relics in the same rankings that I gave them in our uh, boss relics video. But there's our full total tier list ranking for every single relic in Slay the Spire. Whether you agree or disagree, with these rankings. I hope you find them useful, and I hope that you got a lot of joy watching this uh, this breakdown video. Please let me know in the comments below what do you think your own personal favorite relic in Slay the Spire is, or if you disagree with any of my own evaluations here, let me know what you disagree with and why. All right, everybody, thanks you so much for watching this heckin' long tier list. This is pretty fun to make. Hey, hey everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community.
Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. That's up for now.